This is the regular meeting of the Town Council on September 8, 1997. We have a roll call by the Town Clerk. Chairman Groff. Here. Council Berry. Here. Council Byer. Present. Council Fritz. Here. Council Jordan. Here. Yep. Council McGinty. Here. Council Reed. Here. The Pledge of Allegiance and Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there a citizen that wishes to bring a matter to the attention of the Town Council which is not on the agenda? Mr. Chairman, I'll just mention that uh, the County Budget Committee is meeting the next three Thursdays. Uh, I just want to make that announcement. And I'm the delegate to the County Budget Committee, so I just wanted to let the folks know that uh, the next three Thursday nights will be the uh, County Budget uh, meeting with, with the commissioners. Are there any citizens with seeing and hearing none? Report, move on to reports and correspondence, and I believe the town clerk has a report. Thank you very much. I just want to make uh, Cape residents um, know of a couple of opportunities that are available. We have an election coming up on Tuesday, November 4th. Within that referendum of the state election, we also will have a municipal ballot. On that ballot would be included um, a five-year term for the Portland Water District trustee, any registered voter of Cape Elizabeth who is interested in running for that position uh, that is representing Cape Elizabeth, Scarborough, and Gorham. And again, nomination papers are available in my office, and you would also have to obtain signatures in Scarborough and Gorham. We also have an unexpired term for school board. Ann Chapman has uh, left her seat, and this term will expire June 8, 1998. Both these nomination papers are available now in my office. The deadline for both is Monday, September 22nd at 5 p.m. And I'm sure on behalf of all elect the elected officials in this town, I urge all of you to think seriously about getting involved uh, and serving your community. Are there any other counselors with any reports and or correspondence? Rosemary. Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to thank the community and report on the first three months of operation of the new and improved uh, returnable um, shed at the transfer station. In the last three months, in excess of $6,100 has been collected, and no week has been less than $500 in the new building. So thank you. It's worth it. It's great. Thank you to the community for participating. Any other counselors? I guess I should report that the bridge opened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe the town manager has, uh, has an item. Yeah, just uh, three very quick ones. Uh, first of all, I want to make mention uh, yesterday Cheryl Parker uh, put on a reception for all the Portland Headlight volunteers, the volunteers who work at the gift shop and the museum. We had 52 volunteers. Uh, came to a reception down at the Spring Point Museum and I want to thank the folks at the Spring Point Museum for hosting uh, the museum at Portland Headlight and also uh, thank Cheryl and all of, uh, her fellow staff members and particularly the, the 52 volunteers and the 13 volunteers who weren't there uh, for all the work that they've done this season and, and over the seasons at uh, Portland Headlight. Uh, their real tough work is going to be the next month which is actually one of the busiest times so we appreciate all they've done and will be doing. Uh, secondly, I wanted to mention that tomorrow night there's a meeting, tomorrow night, Tuesday night, uh, there's a meeting of the Two Lights uh, Pedestrian and Bikeway uh, Design Review Committee. That's going to be at 7.30 here at the town office. There'll be the preliminary plan ready to review once again. The engineers will be here, and we have sent notices to everyone on Two Lights Road uh, specifically inviting them to that particular meeting. And on Thursday night will be the first meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Pool Study Committee. Uh, which is looking at a long-range uh, plan for improvements to the Donald Richards Pool at Cape Elizabeth High School. And everyone's invited to each of those meetings. Thank you. 
move to the minutes of previous meetings. Is there a motion concerning approval of the meeting of August 11th, 1997? Councilor McGinty? So moved. Approval. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor of approval of these minutes? Opposed? Seven to nothing. And now we will, um, we're going to have a public hearing on the disposition of paper streets. I believe it would be appropriate uh, for the town manager to have a few introductory words um, prior to uh, uh, this public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the council, members of the public. Uh, the issue of paper streets has been uh, studied in the town for about four years now. Uh, there is a state law that provides that all paper streets uh, within the community will automatically ab be abandoned on September 29th of this month unless action is otherwise taken uh, to extend those streets. Uh, there was a study done over a few years uh, that looked at all the paper streets in the community. Uh, there was also a uh, couple of public forums uh, on the issue and an extensive amount of work done, particularly by Maureen O'Meara, uh, the town planner who worked with other department heads and as well as with the Conservation Commission. Uh, after council workshops on this and, and discussion, uh, the final recommendation is that most of the streets, uh, that the town's rights within them be continued. Uh, and that only a few number of streets actually be abandoned. Uh, Maureen, using our uh, geographic information system, has prepared these large-scale plans that show the streets that are deemed to be uh, uh, proposed for vacation. Uh, these ones were chosen primarily because uh, they're not in areas with this, with this really public rights to go into. They're, they're in private neighborhoods or private roads. Uh, we looked at many others, and you know, if there are specific questions that the citizens have on them, uh, we can uh, address them at that time. But I would uh, like to thank particularly Maureen uh, for all of her efforts uh, on this project over the years, as well as the Greater Polk and Council of Governments uh, for the work they did as well earlier in the process. Thank you. <clears throat> are there any members of the public who wish to be heard at this time? Speak now or forever hold your peace. I see no one from the public who wishes to address this issue. Are there any counselors that have any comments concerning uh, uh, this particular issue? Uh, I'd just like to ask if the manager has contacted each of the people who would be uh, affected by the... Uh, I assume that has been done. We have, we have sent notices to all of those who are on these particular streets, and we also sent additional notices to all individuals that we heard from during the process. Right, right. Just want to make sure that's been done. Do any other counselors have any comments? Is there a motion? Councillor Reed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make uh, the motion as drafted by the town attorney. Would you like it read? Yes, I believe that would. Um, yes, I believe that would be appropriate. Um, I move that it be ordered that <laughs> this language be incorporated. Uh, whereas pursuant to Title 23 MRSA Section 3032 as amended by Public Law 1997, Chapter 386 effective September 19, 1997, proposed on accepted ways, also known as paper streets, as shown on subdivision plans recorded prior to September 29, 1987 shall be deemed vacated on September 29, 1997, unless extended for a period of 20 years by the Town Council. And whereas some proposed unaccepted ways may have public benefit to the Town, either as public ways, pedestrian easements, utilities, 
or for other purposes in the future, the extent of which is difficult to determine. Therefore, the Town Council, pursuant to Title 23 MRSA, Section 3032, Paragraph 2, hereby extends for a period of 20 years all proposed and accepted ways within the Town of Cape Elizabeth, except those proposed and accepted ways as shown on the maps attached herein as Exhibit A and denoted as U7-1, U-7-2, U-7-3, U-7-4, that portion of U-7-5 is shown on said map, U-29-2 and U-29-5. The town clerk shall record an attested copy of this order in the Cape Elizabeth County Registry of Deeds, dated at Cape Elizabeth this 8th of September and signed by the town council. Cum Cumberland County? I'm sorry. Cumberland County Registry of Deeds. Say Cape Elizabeth. Excuse me. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Second by Councillor Jordan. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Council Chairman, uh, the, the um, references are to the town tax maps, is that correct? Correct. Yes. Assessor's maps. All right. And there's just one other point. Uh, I'm listed here as Henry R. Berry, and my name is Henry N. Berry III. That stands for New Hall, a grand old New England name, Mr. Chairman. So I would like to have the R change to an N. That can be done. <laughs> Fine name. I, I might have, uh, no, I, I didn't misspoke. I, I said the wrong thing. Uh, Maureen saying it's the street identifier as contained in the paper street study. That is right. not from the tax maps then. Is that correct? Right. For example, U29. Right. U29-5 refers to this street number, but U29-5 is on map U29. So the first two numbers also refer to the map, but the actual number refers to a street. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Any other counselor? Hearing none, move the question. All in favor? Opposed? Seven to nothing. And I assume we can uh, all sign it subsequently, the order. Next matter is uh, item 42, request from Cape Elizabeth Land Company, LLC, to amend Helm Center, Center Zone. And the town manager would uh, give a brief, some brief introductory remark, remarks of how this item comes before the council tonight. I would appreciate it. Yes, this comes before the town council as a result of the Cape Elizabeth Land Company requesting the amendment, and they do have an attorney uh, representing them who could speak for them far better than I. And that's Mr. Vaniotis. It's actually Mr. Hall, H-O-L-E, for those who might wonder. Um, I'm here, Mr. Vaniotis was unavailable, and I am here representing Cape Elizabeth uh, uh, Land Company. And we, as you know, and you've seen the correspondence, are asking that you uh, consider referring to the planning board an amendment to uh, uh, section 19-6-4, which would delete uh, the language regarding the impact on pro adjacent property values and substitute in its place language that deals with compatibility of existing uses and purposes. The, in looking at the purpose section, of, of um, the uh, town center district, I noted, and this is a quote, that the, the district encourages mixed uh, retail and residential uses. Uh, it goes on to say that it now has a prevalence, and that's a quote, of public buildings and commercial uses. And I w we feel, and I certainly would suggest to you that if, if you are serious about encouraging uh, responsible commercial uh, growth in, in this district, that, uh, that this language is necessary. The, the, the existing language is, is literally uh, a lawyer's dream. You folks went through, I guess it was three or four years ago, Gorham versus Cape Elizabeth, and, and won that case on a three to two vote. That case uh, was a conditional use case, and as I'm sure you're aware, a, a conditional use is different than a, than a permitted use. In a conditional use context, 
you as a legislative body have said that, that this use is probably all right so long as we take a, a, a kind of a higher level of, of scrutiny of the use. Here we're talking about uh, permitted uses, and, and I would suggest to you that, uh, that the, um, the, the, the language, the value language that led to the three to two vote in, uh, in your Gorham case uh, might not be as easy to come by uh, as, as, it, as it was there in a, in a permitted use case. The other part of this language is, and uh, this is the third time I've been involved in it, it's, it's, I said it was a lawyer's dream earlier and there's a second part to it. The second part is that your, your proceedings before the planning board are just going to turn into a battle of experts and lawyers and so on when what you really want the board focusing on is, is the various uh, land use issues. Now, with the proposal uh, that, that we have put before you, you're not left unprotected in any sense of the word. The, the district has its own set of standards. Uh, the uh, Article 7 of your ordinance is incorporated by reference, uh, and that has its own whole s own set of criteria. And as I said uh, when I when I started, we're not asking you to throw a standard out, but uh, but simply to substitute a standard that's uh, uh, different and uh, and will be less problematic than this particular one. And what I understand the process is under the ordinance that unless you find uh, that, that uh, this proposal is, is legally faulty or, uh, or conflicts with state statutes or is against some policy in, uh, in your ordinance, that the next step would be to, um, to, to send it to the planning board for a full review. And that's what we would like and appreciate your interest. Thank you. While you're there, <coughs> counselors don't object. I have a few questions. Is that acceptable? Just so the public at large understands uh, this particular issue, the piece of property you're addressing is to the is adjacent here to town hall and is now pretty much woods. Is that correct? Yeah, that's Senator correct, County? Mr. Chairman. I just want to make sure the public at home understands okay. what piece of property we're talking about. Thank you. Now, when your clients bought this piece of property, was this ordinance as written the ordinance? My understanding would be, and, and uh, someone is free to correct me, that that the at the time they bought this property, uh, th this this wasn't the exact ordinance. Now, if that's wrong, someone please correct me. But that's my understanding. I think Mr. Hole is technically correct. The town adopted an entirely new zoning ordinance uh, several months ago. However, the language that's being addressed in this case was in the ordinance formerly as well as the current ordinance. Thank you. So the the language in our zoning law, dependent whether it's I understand that we've now passed a new comprehensive plan, but it's the same language as when your clients purchased this piece of property. And that's what I now understand, yes, Mr. Chairman. So what is the why are we in this situation at this particular point in time where your clients wish us to address this language? What's changed from when they bought the piece of property? I think what's changed is that, uh, that they now believe it would be very difficult to perceive, and, and I mean, you folks know better than I, but I understand there has been quite a history with this project, uh, that they, uh, they are concerned about proceeding with this language in place. And they were not concerned when they bought the property initially with the language, but now, now they are? Is there some reason for that? My sense of it is that, uh, that until they, uh, they met with one of my partners, they did not understand uh, the, the import of, of this particular language and also the, the case law that surrounds it and, and the practical effects of the language. Are there any other counselors that have any questions at this point in time? Councilor Reed. I have a comment, Mr. Chairman. I believe we have a new zoning ordinance rewrite 
report, we don't have a new comprehensive plan. Yeah, you're absolutely matter. right. Thank um, you. Besides, my question would be, besides uh, referring this to the planning board, uh, do we have an opportunity right now to deny any further action on this request as a legislative body? Well, let me turn to the town manager, and since I, I believe that's an option, but I would like to hear from the town manager on that issue. The, the council has whatever options that it chooses to take. It, the customary procedure would be to refer it to the planning board. However, that, it, that is not required, and if the council chooses not to, it's not required to. And if we do refer this to the planning board with a successful vote, does it come back to us before there's any recommended language change or any change? They might recommend some language changes, but there'd be no final action on any ordinance amendment uh, until it came back to the council and, and uh, could not be passed unless the council then scheduled a public hearing and uh, took action following a public hearing. So this is a six to nine month process? It would be approximately a six to nine month process, correct? Thank you. Do any other councillors have any questions or comments? Councilor McGinty. A comment. Um, you know, three years ago, whatever it was, when we had the town center committee, um, they developed this comprehensive, I shouldn't use the word comprehensive plan, they developed a plan to address the center of town. A very specific district was created, um, very specific concerns about the development of the town center, how it would affect the overall neighborhood. Um, and this language was incorporated. It was passed by the town council at that time. And just recently, as mentioned in May, we reaffirmed that language in the town center plan by incorporating it into the new zoning ordinance. And um, I have no desire to look at this as I was on the ZORC committee. We reviewed the entire ordinance package. And, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, um, I have no desire to do anything with this right now. Before we get back to Councillor Reed, is there any other councillor uh, wishes to? Yes. Councillor Barry. Uh, if there is a proposal here, I would like to see a uh, definite proposal to have some more concrete idea of what specifically is planned here. I, I have not been on the council during the uh, period that uh, Councillor McGinty has described, but um, as a relative newcomer, I'm not familiar with the, the history. However, uh, I understand that there have been several diagrams and plans and so forth. I'd like to see something specific uh, before uh, any consideration is given to changing the ordinance. I'd like to see a plan well, if of what is proposed. Just so I understand the comment, are you talking in a more generic sense about having some understanding if the landowner can work with this existing ordinance uh, before we consider changing it? Uh, well, I'd like to Is that what you're really talking about? Probably, but uh, I'd like to see some uh, layout of what specifically is uh, proposed. Uh, but just so you understand, that wouldn't affect the ordinance. We're, the specific proposal right. wouldn't come to us. I mean, obviously, right. to change the ordinance, I mean, that's, it's more generic than that. I understand. But if your point is that uh, we have an existing ordinance and there's been no showing that uh, the landowner cannot operate effectively or efficiently or uh, in an economical manner under this ordinance at this time. Um, I could understand, I understand that position. <coughs> Are there any other councillors' comments or questions? Councillor Fitz. I'd just like to agree with what um, Councillor McGinty has, has said, that we've gone through a process of, a very deliberative process of review over the last number of years. And I, I think the desire of the community is to have a, a low scale village type of uh, town center that um, is compatible with residences that are there now. And I don't think we want to have a negative impact on any property when we develop an adjacent property. So I think the request is, is not a desirable thing for the town. So I, and I think it would send a negative message, a ne message I don't want to send to the planning board if we sent this to them, um, saying that, that we wanted them to do something like incorporating this. 
and, and dealing with it later. I just assume not send it at all and work with the ordinance as it is. And I think there are plenty of opportunities for this particular property owner to propose many options that could fit in there um, to develop the space. Any other questions or comments? Councilor Jordan. I'd just like to make a comment that, of course, I'm sometimes maybe a little thick, but I don't understand the problem here. Uh, I would like to see what they are thinking of so I could get a clear picture on uh, what the audience effect has on their thinking. I hate to go make any changes at this point and feel that I'm opening the door for some other larger project that I don't feel should be in the town center. That was my point. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify one point, and that's that the proposed language would be applicable to the entire town center zone. I think there might be a, a misconception based on what's a little bit of what I've said, that it only applies to one lot, when in fact the proposal as presented applies to the, the entire town center zone. Are there any other comments, questions? I have one particular concern, and that is um, I am trying to look down the road as to what impact a denial by the town council at this point in time, just shutting the door, would have, or what the effect would be sending it to the planning board, uh, and I feel uncomfortable to, in that I do not completely understand uh, all conceivable legal ramifications by any action we take tonight. And for that reason, I would like to make a motion to table so that uh, we can direct the town manager to at least confer with our town council, our attorney, uh, before we take a final vote on this issue. And for that reason, I, as chair, would make a motion to table. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Councilor Reed makes a second. Is there a, a further discussion of the motion to table? Then I'll call for a vote on, uh, on the motion to table um, this particular to the October meeting. I was going to ask time. For the purpose of seeking legal. For the purpose of uh, uh, directing the town manager to confer with our council. As soon as possible. All in favor? Opposed? Seven and nothing, it's table. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the council. <laughs> Item 43, uh, recommendation from Ordinance Committee, raise signs at Lyons Field. Councillor Jordan. I think each councillor has before them a memo on uh, the draft that the Ordinance Committee has put before the council, and we would like to hear any comments, if the council has any, as far as what we have put together. Now the highlights of it is uh, they kind of have more than 540 square feet advertising signage and uh, they're going to be three by six in size and the period that they're allowed to be up is a week before opening day and a week after the season is over. And those are the two, uh, three points that we really went around and around on, and we also discussed possibly whether anybody would be coming in on other fields within the town, and we kind of felt we'd take them case by case instead of making a blanket signage proposal. Now, <clears throat> As far as uh, setting this to a public hearing, what have you, in the, fu in the future, I would like to hear any comments that the other members of the council have 
is one reason we went at it this way, of how they feel about what the Ordinance Committee has put forth. Thank you. And just so uh, I believe all counselors have in their packets um, the draft amendments to Chapter 21 signs. Is that correct, Councilor Jordan? That's what I presume they all. And so what you're asking right now is basically a council discussion about any concerns that any counselors have before we proceed with this process. Is that right? That's correct. Are there any counselors that wish to comment on the draft amendments, uh, the proposed draft amendments to Chapter 21 signs? Councilor Reed. Uh, I personally am very pleased with the language and will support the public hearing. Councilor Byer. Uh, thank you. Question, are there other uh, fields with fences in the Cape other than Little League which might then want to also the similar treatment? Yeah. Uh, I, I, perhaps the Ordinance Committee must have discussed that. We discussed that, but uh, there's only one or two fields that have signs, but they're not so compact as a uh, line field. They're kind of spread out more. And uh, we discuss family field, and there isn't, you know, the signage, of, I mean, the fences around that to uh, use as far as signage, but uh, it was felt by the committee that we wouldn't open the door unless somebody had come forth and would want other signs. As far as the school grounds go, we felt we'd leave that alone, too. Thank you. I have one. Oh, God, Councilor Fitz. Well, I'm, I'm on the Ordinance Committee, and it, it was a great concern to me about uh, the proliferation of signs around on the other uh, fields. This proposal was strictly for Lions Field, and I think some very important language that's in here is that because of Lions Field's relative isolated setting and existence of a dense buffer of natural vegetation that it seemed to me that this field is acceptable to have signs but I would really hate to see signs on any other field in town that would be a lot more visible than this one um, so I, I think that's important language that needs to stay in there so that this does not become a um, priority setting or um, precedent setting. Any other comments by any other counselor? I, I just have a question, Councilor Jordan. Um, right now, obviously, there is one field at Lions Field. With our long-term plan approved by the council and uh, there is the possibility at some time of having a complex of three fields at Lions Field. What would, and obviously there's the distinct possibility in a relatively short period of time of having a second field at Lions Field, and perhaps then at a later time, a third field between the two. What, if in fact there's more than one field, uh, what's the Ordinance Committee's thoughts concerning the number of signs uh, if there's two or three fields? The Audience Committee did discuss that because they feeling that the future of Lions Fields would be more athletic fields and what have you. And uh, some of us, uh, one of us, felt that this would cover the fields in Lions Field, but there's others that have questioned whether it would or not or it have to be reworked, or they would have to come up in individually as, a si as the fields were made. So we would address that, well, I think it would be important before it went to public hearing to be able to have the language, whether we were just dealing with the existing field or whether there was language that was appropriate to deal with either two or three fields. Uh, the language in, in this proposal before us says the Lions Field Complex, and it talks about signage allowed per field. So I think it's recognizing additional fields. Is that your understanding, Councilor Jordan? Well, I didn't quite understand it because when they say the complex, and does that mean all of that acreage in there? That's what I would assume. 
That was my understanding. Okay. I, I have no problem with that interpretation. I just wanted to make sure we were crystal clear on that before we began the process. Does anybody have uh, an issue with this language, uh, meaning that we're including field that lions, that complex that aren't built yet? Does anybody have an issue with that? Well, hearing none, I think my concern is resolved. Are there any other comments? Councilor McGinty. I'd just like to add that there's also a, a draft town council policy regarding the revenue from this advertising and that it would, in fact, go to the Little League um, for the general program funding and for uh, capital expenditures. We will be addressing that also. That's right. And that is in the uh, policy as of it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, is there going to be any restriction on the type of advertising or the products that are advertised uh, in these things for a little bit? Well, that's a question. Did the Ordinance Committee address that at all? Beer and liquor, for example, cigarette advertising. Well, we didn't uh, address the type of signs, as I can remember. Maybe the other members of the company felt that it would be taken up, but I don't know whether beer and Cigarette, what have you was ever brought up as far as the type of signs? I just see uh, within the language of the ordinance the possibility of Joe Camel being spread 30 times around the field, which I know is not the intent of the committee at all. So I, I No, that, that is correct, but we didn't strike it, period, okay. as far as cigarettes and... and Some of these things may be brought up in the, in the hearing, I'm sure. We will review that before the... Item 44 is the recommendation from the Ordinance Committee Ray revenue from advertising signs, and we've touched on that, so I believe it's appropriate to combine those two items. Uh, Councillor Jordan, um, I take it that uh, this policy would, in effect, uh, allow the revenue generated by the advertising signs uh, to be retained by the Cape Elizabeth, Elizabeth Little League for its general program funding and to invest in the significant capital expense of a new field near existing Lions Field. Is that correct? That's correct. Councillor Reed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a question regarding uh, Councillor Berry's uh, suggestion of uh, unyouth friendly uh, advertising possibilities. Would it be more appropriate to have uh, any language that we wanted to restrict the type of advertisement, assuming that all of a sudden Little League loses its senses and, you know, <laughs> decides to put something inappropriate up there? Um, wouldn't it be more appropriate in the language regarding the revenue of signs than in the actual ordinance restricting size, et cetera, of, of signs, if in fact we are going to add language? Where would be more appropriate to add the language? In the language regarding revenue, with a simple um, clause that states that you know advertising will be appropriate, will be age appropriate, or or something that decide, you know if we even have a right to restrict that. I mean, some of us just have to uh, trust that the youth organization is not going to have non-youth friendly uh, advertising items. And the president of Little Leagues here, if uh, representation from him is all we need. Um, yes, he is here. I would assume, does any counselor have an objection to uh, Mr. Rowe coming up to oh. the podium? Oh. I wouldn't want him to spend his time here or not. Use him for information. Uh, if nothing else, it's a wonderful opportunity for the town council to thank you, Jim, for your efforts on behalf of our youth in this community in the Cape Elizabeth Little League. Um, pleasure. Thank you. I think the question is about the nature of the signs, and I would assume that your any advertising that was solicited by the Cape Elizabeth Little League, which in fact would be the advertising solicited by you, would be consistent with the uh, Little League Charter and the goals set forth uh, in the Little League Charter. Is that correct? I would assume the same thing, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I cannot speak for my uh, followers, but uh, 
smoking and, and the use of alcohol and tobacco is strictly forbidden sure. on any little league complex, and I would expect advertising for the same to be to be forbidden as well. Sure. Councilor Jordan. Do you think that that is something that we should write into this ordinance? I agree that I let people think for themselves once in a while in their lifetime because that's something that we didn't really discuss as far as uh, cigarettes and drinking, thinking that it was Little League, that it was a little early for them to start thinking about that. So, what's your feeling? Well, I, I would tend to hope the same. I, I would hope that we wouldn't need to have that specifically laid down in, in writing. I think to you and me and, and the rest of you folks, it is a common sense issue. Um, again, I can't speak for other people, but speaking for myself, and I think the current people involved in Little League, that uh, advertising smoking and drinking would be unacceptable. And, counselors, I might uh, remind all of you that uh, if, in fact, the Little League had inappropriate advertising, at that field, I have the feeling that there would be a change in this ordinance, uh, either enacted by this council or subsequently elected council here in Cape Elizabeth. So I think that is the ultimate safeguard uh, where the people can elect representatives to make sure the ordinances uh, reflect uh, their sensibilities. Anybody, does anybody have any questions of uh, any other questions, Mr. Rowe? I have something that's perhaps more of a question, and that is when the revenue is identified in point number two to invest in the significant capital expense of a new field near existing Lions Field, I wonder if, again, I'm thinking about uh, other programs that may feel that they have not had the same opportunity to put up signs and gain money. I wonder whether if we just said that that money might be dedicated to other new fields, and left it at that, it would give the opportunity for those other entities to negotiate with Little League in terms of excess money as to where it might go, should that become an issue. Mm -hmm. I understand what you said. The problem I have is that there are major expenditures that are going to be necessary even after a field is constructed to make sure those fields are playable each year. And I would hate to see any restriction that it, the monies could only be utilized for a new field and not for the maintenance of, existing fi of the existing that, fields. That wasn't my problem. I didn't want it to be so restrictive that it necessarily went to Little League fields. Well, the, the problem with that, I understand your concern, but the problem with that, it would be the Little League organization, not the town, that would actually be soliciting these contributions. And it's pretty tough, I, I would imagine, having been involved in lots of organizations, it's difficult enough to get volunteers to sell advertising when the proceeds are going to go to their own organization, let alone have Little League volunteers selling advertising where the monies are going to go to another organization. That might be tough. And from the town's point of view, uh, <coughs> It would certainly behoove the town to have that complex well maintained. I'm only suggesting that the option be left open. It's not a big issue. I imagine they can use the money. Well, the only issue is that if we go to public hearing, we would have to have, we have to tell the, or, uh, the, the public what the uh, draft is. So if we were going to do something, we should really do it rather than um. Mr. Chairman, the point that uh, Councillor Beyer raises is actually part of the policy and not part of the ordinance. So as it's, because it's part of the policy, it could be changed uh, okay. by the Council without a public hearing. Uh, it could be changed at the next meeting if he wanted to offer an amendment. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Rowe? Thank you. Thank you. So it's my understanding then that uh, um, we would need a motion to set the draft amendments to Chapter 21 signs to public hearing. Uh, 
Is there such a motion? I so move. Councilor Berry, second. I'll second. Councilor Jordan. Uh, that would be on October 15th at 7.30 p.m. as town hall. suggested at the town hall. To October, so it would be October 15th. Is there any further discussion on that motion? Hearing none, I move the question. All in favor? Opposed? Seven to nothing. Is there a, a motion at this point in time uh, to table the recommendation from the Ordinance Committee, Ray, uh, revenue and from advertising signs until the October 15th Town Council meeting? So moved. So second. All in favor? Opposed? Seven to nothing. The next item is item 45, confirmation uh, of appointment of code enforcement officer. Mr. McGovern. Yes, I'm pleased to recommend to you for your confirmation. Uh, Bruce Smith is the new code enforcement officer for the town of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, Mr. Smith is currently the code enforcement officer for the town of Agunquit, Maine. Uh, he previously served as the code enforcement officer for Standish and for Cornish. Uh, he also has uh, experience directly as a builder, uh, an occupation that he held for 11 years. And I, I think just as significant for five years, he was a small businessman, uh, ran a, a local store up in Sebago Lake, Maine. So I think he has unique experience of operating a small business, uh, working in the construction trade, as well as serving as a code enforcement officer in three separate communities. Uh, we advertised this position about a month and a half ago. Uh, got uh, some good candidates. Uh, we uh, think Mr. Smith's an excellent candidate. He was interviewed along with uh, three other finalists uh, by a committee consisting of the fire chief, the town planner, the town assessor, uh, and myself. Uh, if you do confirm the appointment, it is recommended. Uh, as recommended, his starting salary would be $37,900 per year, and he would begin work this coming Monday. Is there a motion? I'll make, a, I'll make a motion. It is recommended you confirm the appointment of Bruce Smith as code enforcement officer and with the concurrent appointment of building inspector, deputy health officer, electrical inspector, and local plumbing officer. Second. Make that a motion. Councilor Byers seconds it. Any discussion? Uh, yeah, is this a, an appointment uh, intended to be for a year or for some probationary period to see how it works out, or is this a permanent uh, appointment? Uh, I'd like to know your thoughts on that. And under the, the town charter and the uh, statute involving boards and commissions, the code enforcement officer is appointed as any other department head mm -hmm. uh, and uh, can be removed uh, for cause uh, by me, and then that's appealable to a... Uh, uh, hearing by the town council. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? None. We'll move the question. All in favor? Opposed? Seven and nothing. In favor. Item 46. Uh, action upon town council goals for 1997-1998. Mr. McGovern, perhaps you could give some brief introductory remarks. You surprised me, but I'd be happy to. Uh, the town council uh, each year goes through a process of determining its goals for the coming year. I think the Cape Elizabeth Town Council is unique. Uh, in that you're actually one of the few town councils to do this that I know of in the state of Maine. And I think it's, it's been very uh, helpful in, in setting forth a good direction for the community and in particularly in having the council uh, appropriately exercise its responsibility as the policymakers for the community. Uh, the goals this year uh, were developed as a result of two council workshops uh, at which uh, first suggestions were offered. 
the staff went and took the comments and tried to uh, write more specific goals as a result of that. You subsequently reviewed that, uh, made many, many changes. And what you have before you this evening is a result of uh, essentially your second workshop. Uh, the goals fall in the area of budget and taxes. Uh, there's an emphasis in those three goals in long-term planning, capital improvement planning, in understanding costs better through uh, having service, uh, la specific services, exact cost laid out uh, in a, in a more uh, concise manner so that you can uh, exercise your, your uh, responsibility to prioritize services uh, as you review the budgets and review spending throughout the year. In the area of citizen, and the lead counsel is appointed to each goal area. Lead counsel is for that goal area, John McGinty and Bill Byer. Uh, the next goal area is citizen participation. The lead counselors are Carol Fritz and Rosemary Reed. And this has an emphasis on using some of our existing resources to get out more information on the community, such as the web page, the cable access channel, uh, uh, looking at circula better circulation of agendas, and a very interesting one that, uh, if you adopt this, I'll be working closely with department heads on, is development of a more formal complaint tracking system. Uh, you'd, you'd also be asking all the boards and commissions to, re re to review their practices relating to citizen participation at meetings and the provision of public notice of agenda items. Often there's confusion with some of these boards as to when they entertain public comment and when they don't. And this would help every committee to take a look at that and report back to the council by March 1 of next year. Uh, also, you'd continue to look at your policies and how you recognize the citizens who volunteer for the town. Uh, the next area of goals uh, consists of facilities or community infrastructure. And this is looking at facility needs and town property. Uh, one is looking at it for his public safety departments. Uh, Councilor Bill Jordan is going to be working with that goal. Repairs and updating of the T Don Richards Pool, Bill Byer. Uh, outdoor recreational facilities, Joe Groff and Rosemary Reed. Uh, land for preservation of the community's character and for the Green Belt, Henry Berry and Carol Fritz. Uh, the former, former Thomas Jordan land, the report's about to be issued on that. Councilor Groff, Chairman Groff's been serving on that. Looking at school and community service space needs, the school department is forming a committee on that issue and has asked for a counselor to serve on that. Uh, the lead counselor on the goal is Rosemary Reed. Enhancements to the town center. Uh, the town received a grant a couple of years ago to improve the sidewalk along the, the front of the school property on Scarthai Road as well as down through the town center here. Uh, Henry Berry is the lead counselor on that goal. Uh, employee relations has been a major issue for the council this year, and uh, the lead council is working with that of Bill Byer, Rosemary Reed, and John McGinty. Uh, this includes looking at uh, structure to structure our pay and benefits uh, so that they're fair to both employees and taxpayers, and working with the employees on that, the personnel committee, the Cable of the Police Benevolent Association, and the new Public Works Union. Uh, there'd also be a program under these goals to continue uh, recognizing town employees and to publish a new employee handbook. In addition to that, does, do you want me to continue? Yes, I do. I think it's important for uh, members of the community to have some understanding about uh, what this council has thought to be important and goals. And I think it's also very important for members of the community to know the counselors that are taking the lead in these various activities so that if any members of the public have specific concerns with any of these particular goals, they have a contact person. Um, so for that reason, I do believe it's important. I'll continue. Thank you. Uh, the, the additional goals, these are in many different areas, not in any one. I think the first one is one that was, was discussing with the department heads uh, last Friday and said, is one that, you know, there's just a few words on a page, but one that'll probably be a, an, a project that the town council will have a lot of uh, effort on this coming year, uh, perhaps more than any. The town will review use policies and practices at Fort Williams Park in order to determine whether some sort of non-resident fees are applicable. Carol Fritz and Rosemary Reed will be the lead counselors on that goal. There's been a lot of discussion over the years of should there be fees at Fort Williams or not. This says the council is going to be really looking at that issue this year, which is a very significant statement. Uh, the town will review the times of day for demand to police services in order to ensure that the town's commitment of resources best fits the times of need. Do we have the right numbers of people working at the right times? 
Uh, Bill Byer and John McGinty will be working on that goal. The town will review the town's utilization of sewer capacity at the Portland Water District Southern Cape Elizabeth Treatment Plant and at the South Portland Treatment Plant. Carol Fritz and Bill Jordan on that goal. Back in the 1970s, the town needed to do a new treatment plant because there were issues involving that we were overusing the capacity of the treatment plant. This goal ensures that that's really going to be looked at to make sure that we don't get into, into the same situation and have unintended consequences. Uh, the town will review opportunities for sharing services with neighboring municipalities. Uh, councilors Barry and Jordan, lead councilors on that goal. The town council will work with the trustees of the library to gain an enhanced understanding of use of the library as to time of day, use for what purpose, et cetera, in order to help set times for operation, eliminate any little used functions, consider user fees for non-residents for and for little used functions. Uh, Councilor Bill Byer on that goal. Uh, the Town Council will continue a proactive role in understanding and addressing community-wide substance abuse issues. John McGinty will be continuing on that goal. He's been an active member of the Cape Coalition, has also worked with us in uh, helping to determine priorities for the Community Liaison Officer. The Town Council will review the appropriateness of the use of town facilities for daycare, Rosemary Reed. Again, this is a very, very significant issue. Uh, community services has been offering more and more opportunities for daycare and extended daycare within the school system and the town council is indicating that they'd like to look at that this year is is that appropriate is it the, the best use of school space should we be doing it vis-a-vis -vis competing with the private sector so that, that I think that's an issue along with the Fort Williams one in particular that uh, has many consequences and is likely to be of significant public interest uh, finally, uh, the Town Council will promote the various Town Trust Funds for contributions and for utilization of funds where appropriate. Councilor Joe Groff, uh, Chairman Groff is working on that. We have uh, the Portland Headlight Fund, the Thomas Jordan Fund, the Sperling Church Fund, and the Fort Williams Park Trust uh, is, is the four chief uh, trust funds. And A lot of folks don't know that they exist and there are certainly opportunities there. And we hope to have an active program led by Councilor Chairman Groff, Joe to uh, look at that this year. And I hope all of you at home, if in fact you have thoughts and comments uh, concerning any of these areas, that you make an effort to get in touch with uh, the council person who has been designated as the lead, because I'm sure I speak for all the councilors that we really do appreciate your input. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, along the, before we leave that point, uh, I just make the point that all our workshops, the council workshops, are open to the public, and the public is invited, as well as the town council meetings, uh, which are not televised. So, so I, and I'm sure the public does understand that. They understand that the, absolutely everything in this town mm -hmm. uh, that the councilors do is public, with the one exception of when we go into executive session, and they're very defined narrow reasons for going into executive session, but absolutely everything else in this town is done uh, in full public view at all times. I think, uh, I do not believe, unless a council, some other councilor does, that it's uh, necessary to formally adopt these goals. Do you think we should? All right. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that uh, Cape Elizabeth Town Council goals for 1997 and 1998 are as contained in item 46 and are as articulated by our town manager. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Seven and nothing in favor. Item 47, request from New England Telephone and CMP for poll location on Forest Road. Mr. McGovern. Yeah, this would usually appear on the consent agenda, but we had nothing else to put on it this evening, so we, we put it on the rest. Uh, this is a standard poll location request. My question, as usual, is the poll up yet? 
uh, the, the town clerk has been working very, very carefully uh, with this property owner, and uh, it did involve only one property, and we've tried to be very helpful uh, to them in, in advancing along the work so that it was with as little uh, inconvenience for the property owner as possible. So that means probably. Which means I think it's still been done. <laughs> Move acceptance. Is that a yes? Second. I haven't been down to look. But All in favor? <laughs> It's either we've blessed the poll that's up or we're allowing it to be up, one or the other. Either way, it's okay. <laughs> Item 48. Um, are, are we are 49. 49. Yeah, we got it. All right. Item 49 <clears throat> is approval of MMA mail ballots and consideration of MMA bylaws amendment. I don't have that. Uh, Mr. McGovern. Yes, the Maine Municipal Association Convention will be in Bangor, Maine, uh, okay. the week of October 6th. Uh, uh, you, the, the actual voting of the business meeting is on Wednesday, October 8th. You need to designate a voting delegate. Someone will be there to vote on behalf of the town and an alternate voting delegate. The proposed uh, officers are uh, Mayor George Campbell of Portland, proposed for president. Uh, Peggy Daigle, the town manager, administrative assistant, for East Millinocket for Vice President, and for Executive Committee, three-year terms, David Holt, the Manager of Norway, Andrew Hart, the Manager of Union, and Bruce Benway, the Manager of uh, Benefit. I have to remember where Bruce is these days. Uh, advisory Committee members, two-year terms, Sally Tem, the uh, Counselor from Scarborough, Marie Baker, the Manager in Hamden, Jack Klukey from Baileyville, Jeannie Bollier, a Counselor from Freeport, and Kenneth Knight from the Town of Jackman. The bylaw amendment uh, is proposing that the offices and the board, instead of taking effect at the end of the annual meeting, instead occur as of January 1 of the next calendar year. I have no idea why they have proposed this. And quite frankly, as a past president of this organization, I thought the old system worked perfectly fine, but there must be a reason they're proposing it. So. And do we know who is going? Uh, we don't. I am. You are? I believe. Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Is it more dangerous than I expected? <laughs> uh, I have no doubt that you lived through it. Okay, Is there a motion? Councillor McGinn. Uh, I move that uh, Councillor um, Buyer be the designate be designated as the voting delegate, and the town manager McGovern be designated as the alternate voting delegate. Second. 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 It's been per it's been moved and seconded uh, that Councillor Buyer be the voting member and the town manager be the alternate. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Seven and nothing. Is there? A we, we need is, to vote. Is part of that, you also need to vote to uh, authorize yourselves to sign the ballot and check off those names if you so desire and to approve the uh, bylaw amendment. Is there so such a motion? Second? That's a second? That's Council a second. Councilor Reed seconds? So much competition for a second. Uh, any, uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, move the question. All in favor? Opposed? Seven and nothing. Uh, citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Hearing none, um, I will be entertaining a motion to go into executive session. Uh, I should note for all of you at home that it is not anticipated that after executive session that we will be coming back. Uh, is there such a motion? So moved. I believe you. Could we be specific as to what uh, uh, we're going to discuss? We enter into executive session to discuss land acquisition slash disposition and collective bargaining with the Cable Police Benevolent Association. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Seven and nothing in favor of going into executive session. With that, good evening. <laughs>